concept one notes of our unit five on heredity and this is on Mendelian genetics so we're basically just talking through the basics of genetics here and the basics of inheritance so first what we have to remember is that with the exception of gametes which are egg and sperm all cells in your body are diploid and they contain two copies of each chromosome because they are diploid one of those copies is from mom in her egg and then one came from dad in his sperm so if we think back how many total chromosomes make up who you are well there's 46 23 came from your mom and her egg 23 from your dad and his sperm they fused in a zygote and that's what makes you who you are remember genes are sections of DNA that provide the instructions for making a protein and since a gene is a piece of a chromosome and we have two of every chromosomes we have two copies of instructions to make every protein in our body and your proteins determine the traits you have so alleles are different versions of the same gene okay we inherit a full set of chromosomes containing our genes from each of our parents but we may not have inherited the same version of every gene so for example you have a gene that determines your eye color and you get two copies of the gene in, from your parents one from your mom and a copy from your dad mom's copy her allele may say blue eyes and dad's copy his allele for the gene may say brown so that's what we mean by alleles in terms of being different versions of a gene remember homologous chromosomes are the matching or the complementary chromosomes for mom and dad so like chromosome number three for mom has the same genes in the same locations on it as chromosome three from dad but the alleles the actual instructions for those genes may differ all right, so Gregor Mendel, that's him. He was an Austrian monk, and he studied pea plants, and that's how he learned what we know about um, basic genetics. And so he's known as being the father of genetics. And he came up with three laws of inheritance, a law of dominance, a law of segregation, and a law of independent assortment. And we're going to go through each one of those. But before we do that, I want to give you some background on his experiments so you can understand how he came to the conclusions that he did. So he studied and bred these pea plants, and he made three choices about his experiments. First, he used pea plants because he could control their breeding. Um, they self-pollinate, so we didn't have to worry about um, any new um, variations due to um, breeding with different organisms since they self-pollinate. Second, he used only purebred plants. Purebred is a type of organism whose ancestors are genetically uniform. So you may have heard the word purebred when you thought of a breed of a dog. You know, if you have a purebred black lab, every ancestor of that black lab is a black lab, that kind of thing. So that's what he meant by purebred plants. And then he also only looked at either or traits. So traits that only have two options, this option or this option. So these are the traits he looked at. For example, pea shape. Peas are either wrinkled or they are round. Um, the pea color, they're either green or they're yellow. Um, or that's the pod color. But plant height, they're either tall or they're dwarf. The flowers are either purple or they're white. So these are the kinds of things that he was looking at where there's only two options. So, we've mentioned the word cross. What does a cross mean? A cross is a mating of two organisms. P stands for the parental generation, so that would be our first generation. F1 stands for the first generation of offspring to come from that parental generation. And then F2 is the second generation of offspring. So, here's basically what Mendel did. Oops. All right, so in the first parental generation, he took a pure bread flower, purebred purple flower, and he crossed it or mated it with a purebred white flower. And when he did this hundreds and hundreds of times, he got all purple flowers. Now, when he took two of these from the F1 generation and crossed them, he consistently got three quarters of the population to be purple and one quarter to be white. And this is what he used as the foundation for his inheritance laws. So, first is the law of dominance, and it says a dominant or strong allele will express itself over a recessive or weak allele. Dominant is an allele um, 
will always have that trait expressed. So if you have a dominant allele, you're going to show it. So for example, let's say capital letter B represents the allele for brown hair. If you inherit the B allele from one or both of your parents, you're going to have brown hair. So whether you get two dominant alleles, one from each parent, or you get a dominant and a recessive, you're going to have brown hair because it is always going to be seen if you have it. Whereas recessives are alleles that are only expressed when the dominant allele is not there. So if brown hair is dominant over brown blonde hair, and little b represents the allele for blonde hair, the only way to get blonde hair is to get little b from both parents. So two little b so that there's nothing to mask over them. That's what we mean by dominant and recessive. We don't mean more common or less common, which is um, a common misconception. We mean stronger and weaker when they're in the same presence. Now, another word we need to understand, because I just kind of showed these things to you, are genotype versus phenotype. A genotype is the actual alleles you inherit. So what genes are you actually inheriting? For example, are you inheriting two dominant, a dominant and a recessive, or two recessive? Whereas the phenotype is a physical trait or characteristic of the organism that you're actually going to see. So we see purple flowers or we see white flowers. Um, that's what we're looking at with genotype and phenotype. So if we go back to this other slide. These big B, big B, or big B, little B, and little B, little B, those are genotypes. Those are showing the actual genes inherited. And then brown and blonde are phenotypes. Those are talking about the physical traits that are being expressed. All right, so the significance of these alleles. Alleles have assigned letters, as we've already seen. Uppercase is used for dominant, and lowercase is used for recessive. The actual letter used is irrelevant. Um, usually in a practice problem, I'll give you, I'll assign a letter for you, or sometimes they just use a letter associated with whatever trait it is. Remember, each individual has two alleles, one from each parent. If you get the same alleles from your parents, so both chromosomes from your parents have the same allele, we would say that it is homozygous. Um, you either got two big dominants or two recessives, that kind of thing. If you get different alleles, so a dominant and a recessive, we would say that you have a heterozygous genotype. So hetero means different, homo means same. All right, that's the law of dominance. Now the law of segregation. This says when chromosomes separate in meiosis, each gamete, which is your egg or sperm, is only going to receive one chromosome from each pair. So if I have the blue pair and I have the orange pair, after meiosis 1, they've already separated. And then after meiosis 2, we separate the sister chromatids. And notice each gamete that results only has one blue chromosome and one orange. It only has one from each pair. So if a man has alleles for brown hair and blonde hair, so he's heterozygous, he's big B, little b, his sperm cells can contain the allele for brown hair, so half of them would have big B, or blonde hair, so the other half would have little b. Each sperm should only get one of the alleles for this specific trait. The other allele will come from his wife, when, and then those will go together for their child. And then last of his laws is the law of independent assortment. And this says that the assortment of chromosomes for one trait doesn't affect the assortment of chromosomes for another trait. So during meiosis, when the chromosomes line up, this happens randomly. It's not like all the dominant alleles get on one side and all the recessive alleles get on another. It's totally random, so what you inherit for one trait might be completely different from a different chromosome. So any combination of maternal and paternal chromosomes, mom and dad chromosomes, can be passed on because homologous chromosomes line up randomly during metaphase. And this is why you can look so different from your family members, your siblings, even if you share have the same parents because there's so many different combinations of their chromosomes that could have been passed down to you. So um, something that we love to use in heredity is a tool called the Punnett Square. And it's a diagram that shows the probability of inheriting traits from parents with certain genes. So what we do in these Punnett Squares is on the, excuse me, whoops, I went too fast. The outside is where we put the alleles or the genotype of the parent. So let's say mom is heterozygous for a trait and dad is heterozygous for a trait. We put them on the outside, it doesn't matter who goes on each side, and then we fill in each square based on the allele that they give. So from above and from the side, we get big A, big A. From above and from the side, we get big A, little a. Above and aside is big A, little a, and above and aside is a little a, little a. 
So what this shows on the inside is it's showing the possible genotypes of the offspring. If these parents were flowers and they had 1,000 children, 250 would be homozygous dominant, 500 would be heterozygous, and 250 and a fourth would be homozygous recessive. Now, could it be a people and they have four kids and they all end up like this? Yes, because this is just probability. But this is a tool of giving us probability in order to predict what we should see. So here are some practice problems you're going to complete in your notes. Um, first, you're going to cross homozygous recessive and homozygous dominant. So put homozygous recessive on one side, homozygous dominant on the other, and fill in. And then you're going to determine the genotypic ratio. So what percentage, you can use percentages if you want instead of an actual ratio if that's easier. What percentage end up being homozygous dominant? How many, what percent are hetero? What percent are homozygous recessive? And then phenotype, let's say for all of these we're going to compare purple flowers and peas which are dominant to white flowers. So what percentage would show purple and what percentage would show white? That's what you're going to do on this slide. All right. Now we're going to talk about dihybrid crosses, which are a little bit more complicated. A monohybrid cross, what we looked at here, we were just looking at one trait at a time, like purple versus white. In dihybrid crosses, we're going to use this when we're finding the possible genotypes for offspring. Excuse me, when we're looking at two genes at the same time. So what's the likelihood that you get blonde hair and blue eyes? Or what's the likelihood if you're a pea, if you have purple flowers and wrinkled pods. That's what we're looking at. So here's how we solve these. First we write down the genotypes of the parents. Then we have to figure out what are the different combinations of alleles that could result in the gametes after meiosis for both of these parents. So you're going to FOIL, which is something that you probably remember maybe from algebra. So you're going to take the first, the outer, the inner, and the last from each pair to determine all the different combinations. Then you'll write these different combinations on the outside of the Punnett square. And then you'll fill in the Punnett square like normal. And then you'll determine the phenotypic ratio. I'm never going to ask you for a genotypic ratio on these because they can be pretty complicated. So, for example, and notice your Punnett square is bigger. We're going to cross two individuals who are both heterozygous for tall and heterozygous for red. So first you'd figure out their genotypes, which would be big R, little r, big T, little t. And then dad's is the same, big R, little r, big T, little t. Then you would foil these. So first would be big R, big T, and then big R, little t, and then little r, big T, and last is little r, little t. So you're figuring out all the different combinations of R's and T's that mom and dad can pass on. Then you would write these on the side of the Punnett square. You would fill them in here and then determine the phenotypic ratio. Which, for when you're crossing two, in a, two parents that are heterozygous for both traits, it is always 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. Now, here's a different example I want you to try. This one isn't going to work out the same, so I want you to try that. And then here's a third example also. All right, and that's Mendelian genetics in a nutshell.